We can now cross to New York, where we're joined by Ian Rafovitz, history professor at Empire State College of the State University of New York. Hello, thank you very much for your time. Um, our correspondent there just saying then the Iran nuclear deal is in danger. And we heard from Trump earlier saying that he, uh, with Mike Pompeo, he said, we have a very similar thought process. Uh, so did he pick them then essentially because they, they get along and they agree on, uh, on Iran and on North Korea? Uh, I think that's accurate, certainly. Uh, one other arena uh, is the uh, Paris climate change deal where uh, Tillerson, Rex Tillerson, had expressed some support for it, lobbied within the administration to keep the United States in, the, in that pact. Uh, and uh, the president obviously uh, uh, had a different take on it and has pulled the United States out of the pact. Um, on Iran, we know what Mike Pompeo thinks. He wrote uh, an op-ed in September 2016 for uh, uh, foreign Policy, the prestigious journal, uh, in which he, he slammed the Iran deal and uh, criticized the Obama administration heavily for enacting it, um, making it very clear that he doesn't think it's a workable agreement. That was published only about six weeks before the presidential election uh, that put Donald Trump in the White House. But is changing America's top diplomat at a time like this, when we might see talks between Donald Trump and Kim Jong-un, is that really such a good idea to shake the team up now? Well, um, if we ask ourselves how many times we've wondered whether something Donald Trump has done is a good idea, I, I think it would be a pretty long list. Uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, you can certainly say that Rex Tillerson had some problems in management at the State Department, uh, but those are things that could have been fixed and uh, certainly without changing the person in charge of the State Department. Uh, Donald Trump is essentially his own you know, his own foreign policy strategist, just as he's his own communications strategist. I'm sure he thinks it's a good idea. Um, whether or not uh, it makes sense to, you know, get rid of the Secretary of State, I think it's more important that the United States just lost its top North Korea expert right before uh, the announcement that there was going to be this summit. The United States also doesn't have an ambassador to South Korea. Uh, so I'm not sure that Mike Pompeo versus Rex Tillerson is going to make that much difference if you don't have uh, the experts advising the advisors who are going to talk to Trump. In the end, Trump is going to do what he wants. Um, and that's really, I think, what we've seen from this president. That's the thing. You mentioned the lack of an ambassador. And earlier, our correspondent was saying the State Department basically uh, has uh, far fewer personnel now. So what are America's allies going to make of all of this? Look, I, th I think they're going to be skeptical. Uh, I think they're going to be concerned. Uh, are they going to be that much more concerned than they were yesterday, given what the Trump administration has done over the over the first, uh, you know, 18 months? I'm not so sure. At some point, um, you know, the, if, the, if the concern level is already at 10, uh, I guess it could go to 11. Um, there's a movie quote uh, along those lines. Uh, but uh, look, I think they're already as concerned as they as 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 they're going to be, and I think they're they're right to be concerned. Everyone hopes that negotiations between the United States and North Korea go well for the cause of peace. Uh, the, you know, we, won't, we won't know until they, until they take place. Now, Rex Tillerson uh, didn't have any experience in government. Uh, what about uh, Mike uh, Pompeo? He, he doesn't exactly bring a lot more experience to the job, does he? Well, he has the experience he's gained as the, as the head of the CIA, we can say that. Uh, he was a, con uh, a congressman. So uh, whether Tillerson, you know, 18 months into the job has, has gained enough experience to say that he's, you know, more qualified for the job than Pompeo. Look, Pompeo has been reviewing the intelligence that the United States has been seeing. Um, so there's, a, there's some hope that he, uh, and I would say that he did um, stand by the, the uh, assessments of the other intelligence uh, chiefs who said that uh, Russia did seek to interfere with the 2016 election. Um, and so perhaps he can help speak some truth to Trump on that in private. Um, Tillerson clearly was not up for the job, I think, at the end of the day. His, his positions were more moderate than Trump's and more moderate than Pompeo on, on things like Iran and on climate change and, uh, <clears throat> and, and on North Korea, where he had been pushing for diplomacy when, when Trump was really pushing for a military solution early on. Maybe he even influenced Trump a little bit on North Korea. Um, if Pompeo simply goes in there and echoes Trump's hardline positions, then the value that Tillerson had, uh, did bring to the job will be lost uh, because Pompeo will, will really not be in a position 
to challenge or not be willing to challenge Trump. Did, did Trump ever listen to Tillerson? I'm not so sure. All right. Well, thank you very much indeed for your time and your analysis. Ian Rafevitz joining us there from New York.